Hey, everybody. How's it going? This week, I sat down to chat with another old college friend that I haven't seen in many a year. Uh, the other conversation I had was in episode two with the wonderful Alex Hallett. So check that out if you haven't. Uh, in this podcast, we get through a lot of great topics, and I think you'll really enjoy them. I also happened to mention at the end that I'm about to put together a blog post on uh, how to get a podcast started and what I've learned in the first few months. Well, that is posted right now. I've received a lot of questions about that. So if you're curious to know about my personal podcast setup and tips, I've written it all down for you. It's up on my site, CourtneyDiamond.com right now. But don't go check it out just yet. Instead, stay right here and enjoy this conversation that I had with my friend, Michael Muffaletta. I haven't seen you in like over 10 years. Over 10 years. About 10 years. Dude, we barely saw each other in college. I remember I liked you. I'd pass by you like the halls, the dorms. We'd be like, yeah, you're cool. You're cool. And then yeah. like, it was, that was it. <laughs> like, I just knew I liked you. You're a cool person. Yeah, I got a good vibe. She seems all right. Yeah, she seems all right. She's cool. <laughs> so. Did you live in a uh, Braden? I lived in Prawley my first semester. And Dude, I, see, I forgot the name of that dorm names. until you said yeah. it. Yeah. And um, I had a weird roommate. He was always there, but then when, then he, he was always there, but then he wasn't. Um, it's nice when they're not though, right? It was nice when he wasn't there. So he was, he was he wasn't there on the weekends, which was nice. But then he was always effing there all the time, and he ate all my food, and he gave away my stuff, what? like my my textbooks. I'd have like remember Regina Leto, remember her? Regina, what is that? Sounds she's familiar. Super funny girl. She lives in Seattle now. Okay. She's funny because she's like we we share half a last name because she's a Leto and I'm Muffaletto. Correct. And she came back. She's like, oh, here's your book. I was borrowing. I'm like. Oh, cool. And yeah. I had to have a talk with um, <laughs> said roommate. That's pretty funny. Because he was just lending out my stuff. I would I would go get food, go home for a weekend because I lived like an hour and a half from Chapman mm -hmm. and then come back and all that food I, I got by was gone. It was just like he did not understand like living with another human. What did, did you say something to him? I would. I would. I would say like, dude, you ate all my food. What was his he, response? He's like, yeah, it just He was happened. like, so. The, he, was, he wasn't, I don't want to talk shit because yeah. he listens <laughs> and he's like, hey, man, like I remember you. But luckily, um, we had flooding. Because remember that year was like a bad El Nino year? Yeah. It was 2000. I don't know if you were there yet because you're younger than me. But Am I'm, I? I'm okay. retarded and I took like seven years to graduate college. So the, the timeline's all messed up. 2004 to 2008 were my college years. We were there years. the same years. Except I left in 2007. Okay. Left. Graduated. Yeah. <laughs> so I bailed. <laughs> I, I bailed. I said F this. I said never But um, no, we, we were on the ground floor. We got flooded. And he wanted to live in the swamp and I did not. And I, I luckily found a room on the top floor of that place. Yeah. And the dude that lived there was there one time. It was Dang. like living in the penthouse. It was amazing. Yeah, that's so really nice. nice. And he was like clean. So I walked into like a really clean, nice place. And that's delightful. When I delightful. first got to college, I was in that brand new dorm. You remember the brand new yeah, one? New hall. They called it New Hall because they didn't have a yeah. name yet. Because everything at Chapman, they dedicated to a yeah. donor. And there was no donor there yet. So it was just called New Hall. I was in New Hall for the two years after that. I was living... I know you know my buddy Lex. Lex Barte. You don't? I don't think so. I totally thought you knew him. No. That's so weird. Lex Barte. I'm assuming things because you're totally his type. He's into like... <laughs> I'm just... Like you're... You know. Yeah. We have the no, same I type actually, me and him. That's but really um, no, he's... Uh, I was because I was on the tennis team. Yeah. And I lived with him and... I'm just going to name names. Rob Chu... And Morgan Surface. Morgan. I know him. You know Morgan. We were down here Morgan. once with Morgan um, when we were still at college. And he was supposed to meet up with you. But something, I don't know. Something happened. He was, Who he, knows? He's we a Baylor. He's a, uh, <laughs> he was weird. In a good way. Hi, Morgan. Yeah. Um, totally remember I don't know who that. listens to your podcast. I'm being so like. Neither do I. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, hey, I don't know. People do. I get numbers, but it doesn't like tell me. Right. So who knows? Does anyone contact you from school? Say like, oh, hey, I'm listening to your podcast. I know I do. Not that, for, not that like tells me they listen to my podcast. I mean, I like, well, there's no metrics that does. I that, have very few people that I talk to from college. I figured, actually, yeah. very few. A couple, me too. but the but the couple that I do talk to are usually really still solid talk to friends. Um, I still talk to Zuselli, who is my roommate. I have no idea who that is. Yeah. Uh, well, that's Z what I was saying about name? Zuselli. Zoo. Yeah. Her name's Zoo. Selly. <laughs> that's her first. That's her first name is Zuselli. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, here's the thing about my roommate. What did situation. she look like when I moved? She, <laughs> As though you're gonna remember. I do remember that. like faces. There's no way. I'm not gonna be able to. Zoo Sally, I gotta look I'd, that up. I'll pull you a photo up. Cool soon. man. But so I lived in New Hall in the beginning of college. Mm -hmm. and I went Which to was college. Nice. It was like a hotel. It was fancy, yeah. and I was excited about that. Mm -hmm. And I was only 17 when I started oh, college. So young super young. Interesting. But they, I was tripled. Okay. Which was awful. Yeah. 
So we're squeezed into this room, mm -hmm. and we share that, you know, there's one bathroom, at least there's not like common bathrooms or That's whatever. Yeah, yeah. But the problem was, is that for some reason, me and those other two girls, like, we were okay the first night. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I started to make friends with like the football players. Cool. Because I play video games. Yeah, the football players are big on the video games. And I think so the we athletes play, in like, general. Yeah, so we play like Mario Kart. Yeah, and we'd have all these. We like, always played Mario Kart in my, my room because it was it was me and three other tennis dudes on the tennis team. Yeah, we played Mar that game was like already ten years old, but we were still playing it. That's because it's a classic. It's a classic because it's necessary. Yeah. to life. Yeah. So we're playing video games, mm -hmm. and I'm making friends with these guys who they think are attractive. And I think what happened was who the they girls would, thought the guys yes. were attractive. Okay, and so they would come to the room to mm -hmm. hang out with me to play video games. Right. They weren't there to talk to girls. They were there, you know, play games. Yeah. And then ever since that moment, mm -hmm. they started being kind of really like resentful of me. That sucks. They were kind of rude to yeah. me. It got to this point where they were really passive aggressive. They would leave me Lovely. post it notes. What? They wouldn't speak to me directly. They would That's only the leave me post it notes. And when I'd leave for the weekend, I could tell somebody'd slept in my bed or they'd push all my stuff to like the side of the room. I don't, my first roommate did that too. It was just really yeah. like, I was. I felt ganged up on yeah. by two other girls. That's interesting. And it was so bad that halfway through the semester, I requested a transfer. Yeah. And so they say, well, you got it. Here's the list of a couple people that don't have a roommate. Mm -hmm. You got to go talk to them and just yeah, see if. That's kind of what I did. And see if yeah. they'll let you live with them. Yeah. And the first door I knocked on was freaking Zuselli's door. And I was like, hey. And it was at Braden where a lot of the football players live. That's right. So a lot of my good friends Remember were that. already there. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, I need a roommate. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I literally, I don't think I said very much. So you went from New Hall to Braden? Yeah. That's a world of difference. Super different. Braden was like was, living on a boat, basically. So with like little boat cabins. <laughs> no, it's just like, just But it seems like the, like the coolest people live in there. I'm looking up Zeus Selly on my Facebook <laughs> right now. I don't know. Let's keep talking, though. I can multitask. It's cool. I love that you're... Love the thing is, so like, I knew I knew a lot of people at Chapman, and when someone I says a though, name... But I didn't. You're kind of a hermit. That, I was yeah. I was there for sure. I no. had my group of friends uh -huh. that I hung out with, and then I was never there on the. That weekends. was my gauge of you. You're like you're like, which was confusing to think a lot of people. You're like you're an attractive person. Mm -hmm. Usually, people that see attractive people equate that with oh, you're outgoing because you're fearless because everyone always treats you well. Yeah, I've never but seen myself that way though. I've never seen myself that way either. I've only recently realized like I'm attractive, and this is like ten years post me right. knowing you college right right so. right so yeah i just i've never been the person to kind of think of myself in that fashion mm -hmm. and i've always been a little bit shy you know I but i that. had my very particular group that i hung out with and then i wasn't there on weekends i'd go back to san diego it's only an hour and a half away exactly. yeah exactly. so i did the same thing with thousand oaks it was the other direction it's an hour and a half yeah so i was never there for parties Party. or anything like that parties were kind of lame the, uh, the yeah, thing well, with Chapman, I really like Chapman. And looking back, it's a very nice school. I wish I took more advantage of the academics there. Sure. Very, I was, yeah, it was to great. Me, to me, I was, great I, professors. Yeah, very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. there were, you see the professors on the History Channel all the time. Mm -hmm. um, or at least you did back when I watched the History Channel. <laughs> that phase of my life kind of ended. I was so into the History Channel for like a long time. Weird two weeks of my life. <laughs> weird two weeks. <laughs> it was like <laughs> years of my life that I wasted. I'm just watching like the invasion of the... The Hittites and the Israel and the ancient like oh, okay. I thought you were gonna go to the ancient alien show and stuff. That's what was ruined that it for me. Channel? That was History Channel. Okay. You got that weird guy with the weird hair going. Yeah, I mean, I watched it. Quotes. Did you believe it? No, not necessarily. No, you can't but, that it, but but you, I like then, to watch that the problem stuff. with that and like Discovery Channel and, the, and like Michael Phelps racing the effing shark. Did you hear about that? Yeah, is he actually racing? No, he shark? raced. I just heard this on the radio while I was waiting for you in the car. Uh -huh. Um, he raced a computer simulation of a shark and lost. Oh well, it's I'm like sad. what? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm sad. But honestly, how are you going to raise a shark? No, I figured a, you'd lose. they might eat you. B, you can't control, even if it's like, I have no, you know, issues with humans. I don't see them as food. It's not going to go in a straight line. It's going to do what it no, wants. No, because it does not yeah, it's not going to go as fast. stupid yeah. little human Bullshit. competition. No, it's stupid. No, why would it's it dumb care as fuck. About that? that? I mean, it's not even Michael. People are paying Michael Phelps to do whatever Michael Phelps will do. Sure. But um, History Channel, come on. Or Discovery Channel, come on. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. I don't know, dude. I mean, sharks are villainized. That too. And I know they're scary looking they're scary and everything, crap me, but they're actually they're terrifying. I don't want to swim with one. They're a giant gray dragon that lives but, in the ocean that comes up out of nowhere and bites but your But I think they do a lot of good for the no, ocean they're awesome. as far as they, the ecosystem is, right? They clean the ocean. Yeah. It's amazing. If yeah. they're not there, the whole ocean would be overrun with like fish, sure. diseased fish, and then all those fish would eat everything else yeah. and there'd be like nothing in the ocean. I would totally do that cage thing where they put you in a cage. I want to. Underwater. It scares the crap out of me, but I still want to do it. I would it. do that because I wouldn't feel scared. I'd be you like, know what scares me worse than me. that? What? Is the temperature of the water. Just I really cold. hate being cold because yeah. great whites live in I'm cold not, water. I'm not good at being cold either. 
No. I'm not. No. I like warmth myself. I'm Italian. We don't do well in the cold. <laughs> so. I have no excuse. I'm just from San Diego. <laughs> and, it's, and it's warm How warm is the water here. out here? Ah, it's, my, not that, it's not that My warm. brother used to say, it was, he used to live down here. He said it was like, oh, it's 80 degrees sometimes. I'm like, you're crazy, uh, dude. What are you talking about? I think he's exaggerating I still, a little bit. I still can't multitask. I've been like scrolling up and down on are your you Facebook. Look, you're crazy, Not knowing dude. what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh, I should be looking for your <laughs> friends. Get out of there. Why? I'll freaking send you a link I am later. so curious, though. <laughs> this name is Zoo. Z-U. C-E. Oh, there she is. I'm not going to say her last name because that's going to like out her as a human, I guess. I don't know. I'm just respecting privacy. Your last name's going to be on here, so good Muffaletto. I'm, I'm volunteering, <laughs> though. Zuselli. Yeah, she's a person. Did not she's volunteer. Great. So I'm not going to say her last name. But I never saw her roommate. before. She was I never my roommate s- for the no, rest of she college. She did not exist at Chapman. For I didn't know her. College but I didn't know her Chapman. She didn't exist. Oh, yeah, God. So, yeah. Probably a lot of people didn't exist then. I mean, it was my reality. You see, I mean, my reality. You seem outgoing. You I'm seem super like outgoing. I'm uh, outgoing to a fault. That, that was my problem in school. I was so outgoing. I would not do homework. I would just like, here's my thing. I was 21 walking into college, which is like a year shy of when most people graduate because I was yeah, um, I was barely 21 graduating. You were like 17 coming yeah, in. So we're on opposite ends of, 21. I think, maybe a similar spectrum. Yeah. But like, you know, I went to community college and when you go to community college, everyone, no one even like makes eye contact at community college. Like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, we're here and call back. Blah, 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 which is funny because I walked out of there with a 3.8 GPA at Moore Park College up in Ventura County and then went to um, Chapman and I didn't party a lot. I just went like, like, like a dog that just like, there's people coming over and they're new people just all over the place all the time. Just me talking to everybody. God, they drive me insane. Just like, it was like, <laughs> it was social overload. Not in yeah. a bad way. You could never, you, it would never like, it never like outwardly affected me, but it was just like, I was just so like a busy bee all the time. It was just like my thing. And mm-hmm. I like, I didn't realize how extroverted I was till I got there. And it was just, it was almost, it was almost a problem. People were like, oh my gosh, Mike, stop talking to the girl. I was just talking to her. Jesus Christ. I'm mean, not, I wasn't like, like trying to like, yeah intervene on something it was just like oh hey courtney blah 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 and you'd be in the middle talking to so so yeah and like you, you're happy to see me because we're friends and then the dude talking to you thought he was gonna like uh you know something you're like i just talk to people i just talk to I people don't i don't give a shit <laughs> people gave me a hard time about that i'm like well f you man i'm just talking to people yeah i didn't know that etiquette though. i'm the, the opposite because i seem rude because i'm not talking to do you people. have um what do they call it r b f I hope not. Yeah. I hope not. Resting and sometimes face. if I realize that I am doing that, if mm-hmm. I'm looking a little too serious for mm-hmm. whatever reason, I try to purposefully turn it off if I notice I'm doing it. Smile. Sometimes I have a problem of being just too much in my head because if I'm in my own space, Probably. I'm just I'm just thinking a lot of thoughts yeah. and I'm not worried about kind of what's People around me. People think I look mean too. Yeah. So it might be just, I don't, I don't know. know what that is. Plus I wear sunglasses pretty much constantly when I'm outside yeah. and they're mirrored, super mirrored. So you can't see uh-huh. into my soul. So you have no idea what's going Soul on there. Courtney. But it's like if, as soon as somebody talks to me, mm-hmm. I'm nice. You are nice. I'm very nice and I'm very friendly. Nice. I'm very friendly and I'm I mm-hmm. think I'm easy to speak to. But you may not get that from me if you don't speak first because I don't know how to speak to people first. I'm Which I never have a problem with. I'm not I always good. talk to people. I'm so ne- I don't think anybody wants to talk to me. So I just I think assume. a lot of girls have that problem. A lot of gr- like you're again, I'm like blowing smoke up your butt, but it's for real. You're attractive. I think a lot of guys have problems talking to, not even guys, probably like girls too, talking to attractive people because they're afraid and not so much of anything else besides just probably like this person gets a lot of people talking to them in general. They're probably not friendly. They only talk to a certain few. Yeah. And I think that's kind of, um, I don't know. It's just weird. I, have, I I do have a lot of people that think something of me before they meet me. They think I'm a certain way. I mean, they think I'm, A lot of people think I'm way too cooler than I am. Like when they open my mouth and I'm a huge dork and I, I, I know I've let some people down. Those people are idiots, but I know I've let them down because I yeah. thought I was like X, Y, Z and I'm ABC. Well, people, I think we're, I think we naturally kind of prejudge mm-hmm. how we assume somebody's going to be. People wouldn't assume that I love video games. Mm. I super nerd out on that yeah. stuff. You wouldn't think that, I guess. People don't think from... I'm obsessed with dinosaurs. Yeah. It's weird you thing. never know yeah, about know. people. That's the interesting thing. You have to talk to them. You have to talk to them. Mm-hmm. But that's, that doesn't work in my advantage. If I'm seen as an attractive person, and so that's why people don't talk to me. Right. Because they assume that I, you know, everybody doesn't have to hear. It's like a double-edged care. sword. That, that works really against me because I'm not, you know, very comfortable starting a conversation. So it's 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 hmm. almost limiting. How do you make fr- how did you make friends then? Like in college and then how do you make friends now? They're all people that talk to me first. So you wait. Or you wait. Yeah. I so see, what if there's like someone you really want to me. talk to you? What do you do? <laughs> if there's somebody you just really stand there and wait, you're like hopefully no, we'll talk to I her. think no, I do kind of I do little things like I'll try to 
you know, you try to be around them. You try mm-hmm. to proximity mm-hmm. is important at that point. You know, I'll look. I can look, make eye contact, and smyle. I can do that perfectly right. fine. So what I'll put myself in a position to do like that. someone like you, and you're both waiting for the other person to make the first. Then how will it ever happen? I don't know. It probably that's might what, that's, not. That's Somebody's got to. That's why I chose to be an extrovert. But speaking of which, why did you start this? Why did I start this? Yeah. I started this because I wanted it to be kind of an extension of of my blog. Kind okay. of the things that I talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen your blog, to be okay. honest. Okay, it's fine. It's I know, totally fine. But um, so some of the stuff that I talk about on there, some of the things that I talk about on here, mm-hmm. and I just thought it would be nice to sit down and and get other people's perspectives. And I think it's really interesting. I feel like we're kind of maybe I can only speak for myself, and maybe some people that I've spoken to. Sometimes we're a little bit starving for like a real conversation. I agree. So we don't often just sit down and look somebody in the mm-hmm. eyes with no other distractions. Some no of my closest friends on. who are my best friends, I rarely have a conversation with. It's weird. Yeah. As far as like talking about just real stuff. Your and life. you never know. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get to. Mm-hmm. Like d- we don't plan what we're going to talk about. No. On this. I just want to sit down yeah. and see where it's we real go. real that way. And see where we go. Yeah. And it's something I think it's just a little it's just a little nice to be able to set aside that time for. Mm-hmm. And then people will tell you stories that you'd never anticipate and you hear things from them that you'd never expect. And I think it's important that we remember that people are more than that first impression sometimes too. Cool. You know what I mean? Right. So you grew up out here? Yeah. San Diego San born and Di- raised. Yeah. yeah. But you're looking to move it up to LA. Yeah, you know, I've almost done it a few times. Mm-hmm. Why um, do you want to? Why did you almost and why haven't you? I don't know. LA, <sighs> there's good things and there's bad things about yeah. it. You know? And I feel like people up there sometimes become walking resumes. They do. And I like to, I may not meet a ton of people because I'm introverted, but the people I do meet, I like to genuinely connect with. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think I was just worried about the fact that I wasn't going to feel very comfortable up there. No, no, at, especially at that age when I was a little bit younger, yep. I'm very much a different person now. Mm-hmm. I'm a little, I'm a little stronger in mm-hmm. certain aspects of myself, and I just think I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready back then. So no, now, now at this point, I think I'm just a little sturdier. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I feel the same way. I don't mm-hmm. think I'm the same person at all that I was at Chapman. No, I'm I very kind different. of. Reg- I mean, I love Chapman. Regret going though because it wasn't what I would call a real college experience. I envy my youngest brother who went to San Diego State. To me, that's a real that's a, college. Yeah, like there's forty five thousand students that went there. We went to school with what four thousand. I know Almost that might inc- that might include the graduate students in the in the law school. Yeah, small, um, small. I knew I walked out knowing a thousand people on my Facebook that I actually knew. Isn't that weird? Isn't that crazy? It's super out of 4, weird. Four thousand people. Sure I, I knew a thousand. I feel like I talked to like four people. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, I, I was one of those four people. Um, <laughs> I was like four plus. You're like, nah, nah. Yeah, maybe there's six. I six. Don't know. You're like, Mike, <laughs> walking down the hall. Um, so but I don't. I just feel like it was it. It's a great school. It was really. It, it probably was good academically, even though I didn't take full advantage of that. Um, it's it's well renowned. It wins awards. People love it. Um, but I don't think it's a, it's. It, I think colleges are different per person and for like the typical college experience i think i needed that which i did not have and it took me longer to develop as a person Hmm. because Mm -hmm. of that because it was it was high school 2.0 it was everyone knew your business if you screwed up everybody knew um if you did something stupid everybody knew couldn't Um, disappear as much everyone knew you were dating everyone knew everything about you um all and all of my school experiences have been small. Really, you yeah. Went to private school. When, well, I went to a I went to a school called Longfellow, which is a Spanish <laughs> immersion school. It's a weird name, Longfellow. Longfellow. Um, it's a Spanish immersion school, super small hmm. that you have to be on a list on, I believe. That's now down here in San Diego. To, uh, yeah. Huh. So that was really really small. Um, same school from middle school up to or from elementary to middle. Okay. So all of that was one school. I think people need to transition because I, I know some friends that went yeah, to um, didn't have that like religious uh, affiliated private schools from yeah. like K to eighth grade. Yep. Like you need to transition. Did that? You, yeah. Then I went to high tech high. High tech high. High tech high. <laughs> no, 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 no. That sounds like a Disney Channel show. No, it's a it's a real a high, high school. High tech high. It's, it's a real high school, uh-huh. but it's very much project based. I was the first graduating class that's cool though that's cool you can say that so it was kind of experimental like we went that totally sounds like something they put into like a like a like a like a save by the bell type of or even like power rangers yeah and it's it's developed more but we were like the first is it still called high tech high yeah it's expanded there's like high tech international you can even name a band that you you could try i guess i I don't know how successful you'd be but um so but that was 400 
kids it's eventually. It started, I think, with 200. They just did a freshman in, Gnarly. in sophomore class. Yeah. So, yeah, there's 400 kids. Mm-hmm. I was prom queen of 400 you. kids. Cool. Yeah, didn't expect it. Oh, I'm always confused when people talk about going to prom and they're like not seniors. Yeah, that always weirded me out too. I was like, how, how many proms do you have? We had yeah. to fight for there's one. There's like a junior prom. I didn't, we didn't, we didn't have prom. sports teams. That's interesting. We had something called an X block. Which is and what? during X block, you could well you select. Sounds like you went to school with the X Men. You, you were the high tech high. You were the school in like powers. a comic book. Uh, yeah, pretty no. much <laughs> with X block. Um, so you got to select what you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So your X block could be a boot camp where they brought in a outside trainer to run a boot camp class. Mm-hmm. Um, yoga. That's the first time. That's how I got into yoga. Was was taking a yoga X block that was taught by my math teacher. Strange, but cool. But he was yeah. you know fully like into that stuff and uh-huh. I think maybe certified I don't know I was a kid probably but uh, that's how I got into that stuff or you could do I did something called tea time it was literally <laughs> watch British movies and drink <laughs> British tea and talk about them your school was great it was great yeah. and when you're a senior you pick a like a senior project and you could do multimedia you could do music senior projects so we'd sit around on like the lawn and like play guitar for you a couple definitely hours definitely got to do stuff that most kids don't get to do very unusual yeah. educational situation for me, looking all back, the all the way around. Looking back, do you value it? I do. Okay, I do value it. Yeah, I don't um, think I learned anything in high school. I think really. I learned a lot. Like we got th- put through a system. I went to public school, mm-hmm. good good school district, but um, I know my we'll call it a generation, even that's the wrong word for it. But my years there, I mm-hmm. think the four year block I was there, they were doing something experimental at, in that district called integrated math, where you touched upon every like discipline of math within one school year, and no one really got a good mastery of math. And that's the problem with yes. the way things are taught, I think right? So, because in the school district over, they spent a year on algebra and then, then algebra two, and then geometry, the whole year in geometry. I would have loved a whole, a whole year on geometry. Mm-hmm. And then um, trigonometry or whatever. But for us, it was integrated math, one, two, three, and then something called discrete math, which was statistics. I don't know why they call it discrete, but mm, I don't know. Yeah. But, well, that's the interesting thing about my school. Like, mm-hmm. so that same math teacher that, mm-hmm. that knew yoga. He also, like, we would take a math test, okay? Take a math test, and then he would hand them back out. He graded them, and then we'd sit around. We're at a conference table, too. Like, this is a weird, small cool. school. Awesome, it's though. just more personalized, right? And uh, he'd give yeah. us our test back, and he'd go, okay, today for class, you're going to go back, and you're going to look at what you did wrong, mm-hmm. and you're going to figure it out. And if you can correct your mistake on that question, I'll give you credit for it. So everybody cool. can walk out of here with an A. Yeah. You just got to figure out what you did wrong. You got to learn it. That's a good way to do it. That's how so you actually learn, learn instead something. Instead of being like, oh, that's wrong. Yeah. We're moving on to something else. So we like, learned yeah. something in that process, yeah. and we all helped each other mm-hmm. in that classroom. See, for me, as I'm developing as a professional, what I realize I lack is those strengths. Is um, I'm actually, I think I'm a very smart person. I can retain information very well. I'm very good with history, and I'm very passionate about things I know about. But math is a different part of your brain. Math oh, is, yes, mine's underdeveloped. Yeah, but mine is probably more undeveloped than yours. So what, thankfully, I don't think everyone has this advantage or, or is able to develop this, and I knew I had to. It's part of my extrovertism. But um, I knew I had to be able to talk to do anything, to get away from the math. My dad's a CPA, mm-hmm. and all of us, four of his kids, he's, he's disappointed that none of us wanted to follow in his footsteps. But it's just like we never had the tools to. I no, think back then, in the, I think he went to school in the 60s. I think my dad had a pretty good education going through public school. He went to public schools and then and then he went to a state college and then does very well. He's very proficient at what he does. And I, I noticed that about my parents' generation is they're very good at probably one particular thing. They're professionals at that. And yeah. then our generation, so much is thrown at us and no depth per se. Even in college, yes. I felt like it was just touching upon things. So I went through the film program as well. Mm-hmm. And can I make a film? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but do I know how to do that? Not. <laughs> I know how to talk about it. Do I know how to do it? Well, like... talking is very important in the society that we live but in But that's now. what I've learned but is my also, strength. Our generation is mm-hmm. different because we, we grew up in part of the time where it was like, well, you can be anything you want to be. Yeah, but then... You know, you can wait longer to get married. You can yeah. wait longer to do all this stuff. Find yourself, figure out which what you Which I think is important, do, which I'm doing still. Which is, but yeah. that's what happens is that we kind of... Some, it takes us some longer. Some people... Re- it takes us longer. Mm-hmm. And it's a focus thing. Yeah, and you I don't really, think it's a bad thing either. 
and you really you can you can delve into different things. Yeah. It's just a matter of a. Uh, I think there's strengths on both sides. Your it's, time. It, my dad started his practice when he was 25. When I was 25, I didn't know how to cook chicken. Yeah. Um, my dad doesn't know how to cook chicken either. Now I think about it, but at least he <laughs> knew he was doing something. But on the flip side of that, I'm not including my dad in this. Is there's so many divorces in our parents' generation because I think. They're on a linear track, and oh, let me pick up a wife and go and have kids because I'm supposed to. Yeah, but it's like you're not normal. necessarily in love with that person, or you don't necessarily care about your kids. They're there because that's something you're supposed to do. I think with our generation, yeah, we are taking a longer time to do things. I think it's also evident in the economy because our economy has slowed down. I heard a statistic today that 50% of the United States is under poverty. That means the other 50 is above it, but that's not a good no. statistic. Um, but I think if you're lucky enough and fortunate enough and smart enough, skilled enough to find what you're good at, which I st- I'm not an expert. I still want to learn, but I'm good at talking. I'm good at sales. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm good at explaining concepts to people. I think that's important. What also I notice is people tend to are healthier, longer in our generation. Yeah. I think people look younger for a longer amount of time. Mm-hmm. You don't look too different than when I last saw you 10 years ago. Um, I may or may not, but I, th- I still think I look good. Looking, we haven't aged that much. No, compared we're, to yeah, the older generations. We're part of a, a, the kind of like a fit movement that kind yeah, of happened during that yeah, time. Yeah, because where... America became the fattest country in the world, and I think there has been a yes. positive backlash against that as well. Mm-hmm. But I, th- I, I do think part of that is so many people were tied to their desks, whatever they, they were doing. They Fitness was never a priority for them back then. But if yeah. you think about it, you're working and you're earning money to be happy. That's one way to get to happiness. I'm not saying working and making money is a bad thing. It definitely fuels your life, but that's the way you should see it. That is the fuel that's going to fund me to go to the gym. That is the fuel that's going to fund me to get to the beach and do whatever fun things I do, go play tennis, take tennis lessons, yada, yada, yada. I don't think that was a priority for generations past. So mm-hmm. things have changed, and I think there is a um, headbutting. I know there is between me and my parents about, mm-hmm. like, when you get your shit together, when are you going to do this? And like, yeah. blah, blah. Fortunately, my parents had never stressed me on getting married. I think that's just I something. don't get that from mine No, either. but I do see parents like that. It's mm-hmm. just like, when am I going to have grandkids? I'm like, let them like do their yeah. thing at their thing before they have grandkids and get divorced by their 26, exactly. which I've seen because I come from a town with a big mega church. So I've seen that too. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know. I think it's like there's there's goods and bads to both. I don't want to say our generation's better than the older, but I think there are parts of ours that are good and parts of ours that aren't as good. I think our work ethic is less than our parents' generation, mm-hmm. but I think our overall health and our version of happiness, we just got to realize what happiness is, maybe better than theirs. Mm-hmm. So I think I think um, I'm not a, I'm not a socialist. I'm not I'm not like an anti-capitalist at all. I believe if you can make money and have a lot of it, great. But I think so much happiness is tied to financial, just a dollar sign that yeah. that is unhealthy. And I was living that way for a very long time until yeah. recently, and I was just so stressed out and just like I'm not like, achieving what I want to achieve in my life and compare yeah. myself to my dad who, you know has all this stuff in his life, but then I realized like it's stuff. Like my parents have a stuff. big house full of stuff. Not organized stuff. It's dirty stuff. It, I walk in there <laughs> and I'm just like, God, it's just dirty, a lot of stuff. dog hair, spider. It's like my parents are like I don't want to say anything bad, but this close <laughs> to being quarters. It is it is not good. There's stuff in there. My dad does not get, get rid of cars. So this 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 still put a, put in perspective without I hope bragging. My dad owns about between 14 and 20 cars. That is a lot of vehicles. But they're not cool. Okay. He has a 1985 cream yellow Cadillac. Pardon this generali- generalization that should belong to a older black man named Leroy. Okay. Like that kind of looking car. <laughs> you know you know what I'm talking about? It's it's like a Coupe DeVille from 1985. All right. And the mechanics keep saying, "Pete, Get rid of this thing. Like it's 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 worth probably eighty dollars at this point. Yeah. Literally, um, it, my parents just never get rid of anything. But I also I think that's part of that generation. I don't know. You it's would a think constant evolution. It's constant evolution. We're a constant evolution because We're figuring it out. I, I think most parents are like this. There's a few that aren't. They grew up fortunate, but they grew up in a time right after World War II where everyone had to work really hard. And in the fifties, I don't think um, there was as many people that were hitting it big yet as say the eighties when you saw like a big boom in, in people with personal wealth. Um, so you just had to work super hard to get to that spot, which is why in the eighties that happened because mm-hmm. by the time someone who was born in the f- in 1950 got to 1980 and they were 30, 
all of a sudden you see you see it in the movies too like it's just people living in these quaint houses and things kind of evolve and by the time you see 1980 movies like wall street come out and this and the other and that, what i love about movies is it's a, it's a reflection of society at the time absolutely and and you really saw how hard people worked then to get to where they're at and then somehow the 90s happened i think there was another recession in there and it it's almost like it is repeating itself. It's, we're starting over again. We're starting back from like just 1949, really. Yeah. Because the we had the importance of history, though, right? Yeah. So you can understand what the patterns are exactly. if you're really smart. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a different thing. I think mm -hmm. there's just we have we since we don't have exact firm tracks of like how you're supposed to do Which it I and think what they a used happy to. Yeah. yeah because you were told you're told to this is the path. Which is easier but not necessarily happier. It's, it's easier but not happier. Yeah. So now we have more freedom mm -hmm. and our goal is to, I mean, for me, like it, to have money is to create, to be able to create some freedom for yourself right. is, yeah. is the ideal mm -hmm. situation so that you can go and live some life. Where you want to yes. and how you want to. So when know. things yeah. are more open-ended though, now as a person, mm -hmm. you just have more responsibility mm -hmm. to figure out how to be happy, right. what, what is a, you know, how to improve yourself how to find the thing that's going to make you feel fulfilled mm -hmm. and satisfied. It's mm -hmm. more personal responsibility on you to figure out what that means if you're not going to follow a very traditional, you know, yeah. track of what you've seen yeah. in the past or your, your, your parents may be telling you to do. Right. Because I, I constantly butt heads with my parents about that stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just like I didn't want to become a CPA because I knew it's going to make me miserable. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of things that have been presented to me that would have financially got me pretty far, but I just said no. Well, I've yeah, said no I to mean, like probably ninety nine percent of those things. I've, I've always been a more creatively minded mm -hmm. person, and uh, that's awesome. And then sometimes it sucks. Like I, I talk to some other people that are just you know they 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 don't see themselves at nine right. to five desk jobs. They're like, no. I can't possibly do that. And I'm like, yeah, it's like it, we're almost sometimes we're like, I like I wish I could do that stuff. It seems mm -hmm. like it'd be easier than What's feeling like I'm too, always trying to figure it out. Yeah. What's funny too is I've I've noticed until recently again people were judging me for not being financially successful. And I think I think the whole society has shifted. I'd, I'd run because you know I'm a guy. I deal with girls. I'd run into girls. They'd be like, "Oh, you do what? You like you teach tennis? Like, well, how much money does that make?" That's some, sometimes first words out of their mouth. They say that. I'm like, well, you know, it makes enough. You know, I pay my bills. I would never. Well, think, you live in San Diego, where everyone's like that. happy and beach bums, and that's not correct. I know it's not correct. <laughs> I say a lot of things that aren't correct just to get people going. It's not correct. Yeah, yeah. but um, I think. And maybe it's the age that I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with like older people now because mm -hmm. I'm older or or whatever. But I think I th especially Chapman because that was a money school. It was. Yeah, P kids were driving around Mercedes and ish, and they were. Yeah, they were for sure living in Newport Beach and then mm -hmm. going to school at Chapman. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Nothing wrong. With that. But I think for the normal person, um, it's just different. And like for me, I chose to be normal. Like my parents do very well. For me, I, I I have a psychological crutch where everything was paid for. I didn't. I have no student debt. Thank God, goodness. But I feel like sometimes maybe I needed that to push me along. Um, I'm finally realizing that failure is necessary in for life. growth. For growth. Yeah. And so There's many, so many people look at failure you're like, oh my gosh, you you fucked up. No, like, well, you should feel terrible. You fucked up. It's like, ah, oh, fucked up. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm doing it better. Some people think you know? of a failure as like an end. It's mm -hmm. not an end. Yeah. It's a moment. Yeah. That didn't work. And now you learn. Right. You do something different. Yeah. Like, and so everybody's scared to fail, but it's like, it's just, you know, you, you're you still brush, living, you're you brush still, it off still and you're still going. Yeah. You just got to, you're making your mm -hmm. way. And, and, and that's, that's how we, that's how we grow into better people, mm -hmm. I think. So we have to stop kind of being afraid. Of What's funny too is I, I suddenly realized just basically over this weekend, um, and I, re I realized it at times in the past, I've gotten through like ups and downs of this realization, but like my life now is just as fun as of it as I could. I could deal with more fun in my life. That's a funny thing to say, but like it's 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 a lot of fun. I'm mm -hmm. I'm finally realizing I'm living a very interesting life full of fun that I didn't necessarily get here by funding it. I got here by making connections with the right people. When I mean right people, I don't be people like oh this person knows this person, therefore I'm gonna like use them. Genuine people who happen to you know like one of my best friends is a musician. We have music parties you know every couple months. It's just you. It's the real effing deal. I never thought I'd be living in a music video that I watched as a child, basically, that thing. Like, we, we had a Rolling Stones party where, like, eight different bands rolled through, and you had to do, it like, a Rolling Stones cover. And it was 
flipping amazing. It was better music than I've seen at most other live music venues in this dude's house in Seam, like Podunk, Simi Valley, California. Yeah. It's amazing. And this mm-hmm. is my life. And it's just great because I stayed being a genuine person. I didn't grab the, not nothing wrong with being a stockbroker. Maybe your passion is making money and making sales and that, that thrills you. That's great. But that's just not for me. But for me, I found my happiness not through funding it, which I still am trying to do. I'm not, I'm not, I'm sure. no slouch. But um, you just gotta, you just gotta realize what you're doing. Like a lot of people, another example, a lot of people go through school not realizing I'm getting a degree for a purpose. A lot of people like, uh, oh, I, an amazing job got offered to me, but I'm not done with my, my, I didn't get my diploma. So, dude, amazing job got offered to you. Why are you going to school? Like, not why are you going to school? Like, what was your purpose to go to school? Mm-hmm. Was to get there. So, like, what is your purpose to go to work? It is to get to the spot in your life where you're comfortable and happy. Some people get stuck in the school pattern. And they, they get stuck in the pool, more, school pattern and then you get, school. nothing wrong, nothing's wrong with a workaholic, but you sometimes you forget why you're working. Mm-hmm. So I've I've been lucky and I don't I think I don't I don't know maybe most people aren't like this but I've I've noticed that is that your foot Yeah okay just just want yeah. not that I mind I just want to know what I'm touching I constantly step on people's feet so I'm sorry Um I could be stepping I could be on a table this size which is a, a reasonable size table and I will still like stomp on your foot somehow That's hilarious Which I'm not even that tall it's just weird it's how just that works Cuz you're extroverted I'm so extroverted so I'm just like hey way. I'm in your space <laughs> I'm like I'm not sure I'm 5'10 but still <laughs> And you're not tall. You're like what? Five, five two. Yeah. So yeah, like for me to like reach over there and like <laughs> kick you would be impossible, but somehow I'm already doing it. Figure it out. So yeah. <laughs> so but um I don't know, I, th- I just think people need to slow down, realize what they have in their life and what is it that's making them happy. Well it's about appreciating the moment. Because yeah. so often yeah. you're like, Well, I'm supposed to be this. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. We're always telling us, I'm supposed, supposed to, to be this. Yeah. Well, where are you now? Mm-hmm. Is right now that bad? good example of that is I have um Again, this is going to sound like generalizing and it's going to sound like I'm putting people in a box, but I've seen it enough times. Uh, kids from immigrant families whose parents want them to be a lawyer or you have to be a doctor or have to be this and that. Yeah, they're going for really affluent And they're careers. so f- freaking just, oh my gosh, I'm going to let my family down and my grandparents down because I didn't become a lawyer and blah, 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 blah. And it's funny because if they just let themselves be them and find their own path, they could be 10 times more successful than a doctor or a lawyer, which... Yes. It's easily possible. Because if you're doing what you're meant to do and what your skills Mm -hmm. lean you towards, Mm -hmm. you have to be more successful in it, right? Yeah. You have to be. And you don't feel like you're working so hard. And like I was saying the other day, like I was like, when you go to work, there's all this whole like like, people hate Mondays. Yeah. I hate my, oh God, Monday. Is that what life's supposed to be? No, dude. Is that? I don't want to. It's funny because I've I've taught tennis the the last 15 years and I've worked. Almost every single day of the week. Yeah. It's like I don't hate Mondays because Monday to me is just like Saturday because I enjoy what I do. Yeah, and I don't so. want to feel like I have to. You know, have to dread five days of the week. Yeah, no, that sucks. What? No, that that's where people start to be unhealthy. That's where that makes no sense yeah. in the concept of life. No, at all. You know what I at mean? All. That's just crazy. It's the same thing too. We were talking about. Uh, speaking of like visuals, right? Mm-hmm. And I was talking about my friend. Like I was like super visually self conscious for whatever reason. I just wasn't feeling. Like attractive, gotcha. In a moment, for yeah. whatever reason, no, I get there. and I'm being because I'm being too hard on myself, I'm being mm-hmm. ridiculous, mm-hmm. I'm being silly, uh, as most people I think are most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of this mindset of like, what? What if I imagine myself as a 90 year old woman mm-hmm. looking back at a picture of me now, mm-hmm. or thinking of myself now? I would think I was the biggest idiot in the world. Yeah, for sure. Look at you. You were young. What was wrong? With, there's yeah. nothing wrong with you. You're fine. Yeah. No. You're yeah. Fine. You're 90, no, for sure. like when I'm 90? I've seen pictures of me a long time ago. I'm an I've, idiot. Yeah, I've seen pictures <laughs> of me in high school. I really haven't. I'm not that much physically different. I'm. I hope I'm more muscular and more of a man. Mm. But um, you know, back in high school is the worst. I think. I mean, you went to high. You went to high tech high, so that's oh, different. Trust me, but, I went through a nice, solid, awkward phase. Did you? Yeah, several years of my life are almost missing from photos. I think my parents even knew I was super awkward. Maybe they didn't want to take pictures Dude, of me. Dude, most of my life is not photographed. <laughs> oddly not, enough, and there's four of us. It was like, oh, not blah, blah, blah. Cute for a good yeah. portion of time. Mm-hmm. They yes. see family. They see pictures of my family members, not me. Yeah. I look like Napoleon Dynamite around my um, middle school years. I had cur- much curlier hair than I do now. Uh-huh. My hair, hair is like straining out as I get older. I had I not that I was trying to do this. It was more like someone saw me than created Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> I had the tight shorts. I wore like oversized Looney Tune t-shirts, which I'm saying this now. It sounds like super hipster cool. It's the 90s. Right. This is like early 90s. Yeah. I kid you not. I had those snow boots and I wore them. Dang. And I had the glasses. 
pure fashion. And I was so like now that'd be cool, right? Yeah. But like you back then, you want back now, then, yeah. Just, you can wear whatever. I, I'm that's the cool thing about now. You can I think. wear whatever you mm-hmm. want as long as you own it. My sister is 12 years younger than me, and like I swear to God, she looks like a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> She's cool though. She pulls it off. Yeah. <laughs> she bought a uh, a yellow jumpsuit from Urban Outfitters last time we hung out. Mm-hmm. Dang, Urban yeah. Outfitters. Yeah, they're that's their theme is like. Mm-hmm homeless shabby chic homeless or hipster hipster yeah. we don't know the difference. but it's like you pay 90 bucks to look homeless yeah but quite frankly yeah. it's true though it's like if you want to wear something mm-hmm. but you yeah. own it and you rock it people can't make fun of you it's funny because my, you're comfortable yeah my buddy aaron who's the musician dude he's long beard wears like um vintage clothing we'll mm-hmm. call it he's in my mind very successful person um in my eyes i should say he runs a lot of um after school music camps but um, he was at this um, school and he grabbed this kid in his auditorium and said, hey, can you go grab the principal who he knew and have him come over here because I want to talk to him. And the kid goes, oh, OK. okay. So, and he was at the door and the principal was way up in the auditorium and the principal's walking halfway through the auditorium, which is a big room. And like halfway through, he just starts cracking up and keeps walking to my friend Aaron. My friend's like, what's what's going on? And he goes, that kid over there said that homeless guy over here wanted to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's not homeless. <laughs> not homeless. He just is looking cool. That's so funny. But, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, I think the concept of success just has to is maybe adapting. Yeah, it's, I think adapting. it's adapting. I think people need to be happy. I, and I don't want to sound like one of these like hoity, not hoity toity, but like frou frou granola y like nothing matters. But I think I think you need to find no, your perspective. Matter, but it's about figuring you out do what need matters, money. What you do. matters yeah. to you and yeah. to be comfortable and take care of yourself mm-hmm. and everything like that. The problem is that we've also we kind of live in this uh, time of ideals. Like you're supposed to look perfect or you're supposed mm-hmm. to look a certain way and yeah, this is what's right. ideal. And if you're different than that, well, that's probably not good. You should probably be striving to be that. And it's like, that's, that's how I felt probably three years ago. Yeah. Like until very recently. And that's, but that's the best way to be unhappy. Yeah. That's, that's a good way to put it. Best way to be, best unhappy, way to be unhappy is, is to be striving yourself. for some, yeah. compare yourself to yourself, mm-hmm. realize your own strengths. Because mm-hmm. it's like, I was, th- I was thinking about that too, like about body type. Yeah. Like say I'm sitting here five two, mm-hmm. small person. Mm-hmm. If my ideal body type is Heidi Klum, not am I, yeah. I'm not ever going to get the there. the height. Yeah. The height, yeah. the, I'm like, she's real, real thin. Mm-hmm. She's naturally very, very but thin But that's build. that body type. It's that body yeah. type. I'm smaller, but like my body wants to be more muscular mm-hmm. in general. Which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. It's what my body does. Right. And so I think the problem is when you get set in those ideals mm-hmm. and that's pushed on us. I think girls us, have it tough that way. It's pushed on us yeah. a lot. I think what girls have more body be. types than guys. I think guys are either like, you're either yeah. like chunky or you're in shape or you're really thin. And girls are like everywhere in between that spectrum. There's like eight different bodies. So it's like, it's weird for girls. And you I feel can, like and, and there's a lot more pressure. And you just don't have to be one thing. And I think that's, it. what's crazy is that I'm noticing it in my guy friends too. Mm. And guy friends struggling for these certain ideals and worrying that they're not enough. Right. Now we know it's getting bad. If it's gone to the men. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> they're worried yeah. whether they're not muscular enough. They're not. Well, I do too. Yeah. So, but I it's mean, like, it's natural. You're enough. <laughs> but it's coming from people that, but it's coming from people that genuinely are, are healthy, yeah. fit, active yeah. individuals. Mm-hmm. And they are still worried about being enough. Yeah, it's funny because they're probably very good at whatever they do, whether they're like a long distance runner, tennis player, yes, or we're whatever. very hard on ourselves. Swimmer. But like you want to have that musculature that just doesn't yeah. there's a reason you probably got into like I'm gonna stop saying tennis because it's it's very specific to me, but there's a reason someone probably got into swimming because they were probably like a lanky dude. And mm-hmm. to me, like swimmers good are good body type really form. yeah. You probably gravitated towards that because you're good at that. Mm-hmm. You're you're probably I'm gonna say probably not gonna have the huge upper body build of say like a like a you know a football player. It's just not gonna happen. But like you look, you just gotta realize some of it what is genetic lottery. Everyone has. I think every with. person has the potential to look as attractive as they possibly can, and yes. it's not gonna look like the next person. I know, but that's the best thing you can yeah. do. You can say you look in the mirror and you say, mm-hmm. "What am I? Mm-hmm. What am I working yeah. with? What's good on me? What?" You yeah. know, what gets fit on me? What mm-hmm. can I do for myself? I still and think then, you need to try to be in shape and try to sure. stay healthy with that. But you just know you're not going to... Compare yourself to you. Yeah. Do your yeah. best I, version That is who body. I compare myself to. I used to be more muscular before. I had yeah. this injury with my hips. My, my hips are misaligned and it fucking sucks. <laughs> but um, I used to be leaner and more in shape. But it's like now I can... You're freaking super lean. What are you talking about? <laughs> there you go. Exactly it. So... 
yeah. we see ourselves more harshly. Than we do, don't we? That's weird. Yeah. yeah. And it's then you get silly. that random shithead every once in a while that says like, oh, food belly. And you're like, I those, am those 11% other... body fat, miss. I'm yeah. sorry. Or do you ever yeah. you eat super healthy pretty much like 80% of your life, mm-hmm. 90% of your life, mm-hmm. and then you decide to have, have like one, you have an ice cream yeah. or you have a, you eat some pizza or something pizza. and then somebody. can never say no to pizza. I believe in a cheat meal. Absolutely. The problem is when I get pizza, it like it becomes like survival food for me. It's like I'll get a whole huge big pizza and it'll last me for like three days. So I end up eating pizza for seventy two hours. Ooh, but that's kind of fun though. It is fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of fun though. But that, but then somebody will be like, "Oh, that's crazy for or that." You bring it up, and mm-hmm. I'm like, "Can I just be a normal person? Can I just eat food without you talking yeah, about my food intake?" Fuck up, dude. <laughs> like. Very healthy. Are you Let a me food eat Nazi? Did the, the government like employ you to like well, one thing police to have, people's it's food? One thing to have your own paranoia. Yeah. If you're, if you're feeling guilty mm-hmm. for having, and then someone else comes along. You're in your head. You're in your own What's head. What's funny going, about those people I pizza is I know. Yeah. You. I'm talking over you, and I apologize. Yeah, it's all good. Um, I'm really <laughs> excited. Um, what I know about those people is they typically have some insecurity of their own, and they project. Yes. I was told once I have janky teeth by someone that I already thought had a janky face, but I didn't tell her she had a janky <laughs> face. I'm like, how dare you tell me I have janky teeth? Right. Yeah. It's well, that it does that go back to that thing? Remember when we were taught as kids, like if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything mm-hmm. at all. Like, where did that certain, go? I don't know yeah. because there's certain comments that even if you think them, and we're humans, we mm-hmm. all have terrible thoughts mm-hmm. from time to time. Oh, for sure. There are certain things you don't need to say. No. Sometimes you stop and you say, "Do I need to say that yeah. to them?" Probably not. No. Why would I do that? It might hurt their feelings, even if they don't show you that you've hurt their feelings. Yeah. They'll maybe be thinking about exactly. it somewhere. You know what I mean? So just people, people are mindful. Sometimes people are not mindful of what uh, they're. People are retards. Of what I love saying. that word. I hate that word. It's become illegal. Well, you know, it's yeah. a PC world. It's a P- I'm not PC. That's the problem. I'm, I'm being so polite. You don't come so off as PC. Right I haven't seen you in a while. You're no. not coming off. Has as I ever? PC. Have I ever? Uh, like. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think it's the longest. For sure, this is the longest time we, you and I have ever had a conversation. Most definitely. Definitely. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Most definitely. So. so what's up? What's up with LA? LA, um, I don't know. It's LA, man. You had I mean you expressed interest in talking about uh the dating scene up there. You had thoughts. The dating scene is is, is you're a single I human th- up in LA. I'm a, I'm quasi single. Oh. You know. So okay. making um, progress. I I I do go on dates more so for entertainment. I'll be honest about that. Okay. And sometimes networking, even though I said don't use people, but like okay. it's LA. It's it's interesting up there because when you go to other cities like Orange County, even for example, which is just like the next county south, people really want to hang out with you for you. They want in LA, people want to hang out with you because of what you could possibly. Because I'm a bad example of that. Bring them. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's it's almost like if people make a connection up there, it's on certain levels. I'm sure not everybody's like this. It's almost a, by accident. It's like oh, I was hanging out with this person because they could possibly get me a job at Sony. And, Oh, this person's kind of cool. I'll I'll keep hanging out with them. But it's like a lot of like, I've literally been on dates on the receiving end of that where people are like, "Oh, you're a tennis instructor." Oh, okay. they're like, "What am I gonna do with that?" Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's like unless they want to learn tennis lessons, which I charge for. That that puts <laughs> people off too. It's like, oh, it's not for free. I'm like, this is my job. Mm, you know? How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> so, but That's um. Funny. No, it's 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 interesting up there. I notice I notice you know other places go outside the state, just go outside the city. People actually want to hang out with people for you know enjoyment, which mm-hmm. is different for up who there. They are. Yeah, compatibility. It's very status driven in LA. It's very um, and again, not everybody's like this, but you know it is LA. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very what can you do for me? What can this bring to my life? What advantages will this will this um, you know help me with? Yeah. So you it's see it a lot. You do see it. A lot. You see it enough to know it's a thing. Yeah. So San Diego's great because everyone down here is just I think. Fun. It's just fun. Fun. Are we the more thing. mellow? You're I don't way know because I'm a San Diegan, so maybe I, I don't have a good perspective. Yeah. No, you don't. I because in it. I don't have a good perspective being up there. And then I get out of it and I'm like, holy crap, people are different down here. Or we're just more relaxed. You're more relaxed, for yeah. sure. Um, I think down here everyone just wants to let loose on the weekends, go near the beach, go on a yacht cruise, you know, have drink mimosas and just chill. Just I, do, be fun. I do those things. I mean, I haven't been on a yacht cruise at any point. I, I, <laughs> last time I was in San Diego, I went on a yacht cruise. But, um, Classic. Yeah. Classic. I have a weird like perception of San Diego. It's not a bad thing. It's just weird. Mm-hmm. I used to come here a lot when I was a kid because I had a cousin that lived down here. And then they made Anchorman. So to me, like San Diego is somehow caught in the 70s 
a little bit. Interesting. Which you probably don't agree with. You've held on to that. I've, no, I've I don't held feel on to that. Very but like, either. like when I watched um, like Gardens of the Galaxy movie like that, all the movies is like 60s, 70s music. Mm-hmm. Reminds me of San Diego. Wow, that's that's really my funny. vibe of San Diego, which is good because I love it. Maybe because it's more. I mean, the, if you think of the 70s, it's kind of chill and more mm-hmm, relaxed, and exactly. Like friendly and this yeah. and that. But it's really interesting what cities do, large cities do especially. Mm-hmm. We're very much broken up into neighborhoods. Oh, for sure. It's like, well, what vibe are you feeling tonight? And then mm-hmm. somebody describes it to you, and you're like, oh, well, you need to be in North Park. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. You know exactly. And it's hilarious because, you know, OB, uh, you know, Pacific Beach, La Jolla, Mission Beach, mm-hmm. they're all on the, the right same street. Next to each other. Yeah, on the same street. And within a couple blocks, you've got different an entirely vibe. different environment. That's pretty cool. It's it's pretty interesting that you can do that. Mm-hmm. Is, is LA like that? I figured it's not LA. The last that's time another I went to that's LA, another problem. I, I'm feeling I'm so negative on this podcast, but I'm just talking real. Um, I feel like LA has a problem with that too. There's no identity as an actual city. I was telling you this when you wanted to visit that one time. I said don't go to don't go to downtown because yeah. that's actually not the central part of the city. Right. The central part of the city is uh, Sherman Oaks, which is this kind of it's a it's a well to do. Um, yeah, I've been there. It's not really a suburb, but it's 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 busy. Yeah, it but, had shops and then, but bigger homes. Yeah. I was a little confused by it. I didn't know yeah, what to LA, think. That's the thing with LA. There's no like. There's I never no, know where I am. Except there's that too. There's I don't even know where I am half the time in LA. Yeah. That's the problem. Santa Monica is nice. Santa Monica is not technically Los Angeles. It's its own city. Is it really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, so when most that's people why. outside of LA think of LA, they're actually thinking about Santa Monica. Yeah. That's the weird part. So LA itself is so spread out and there's no um, public transit, which we used to back in the thirties. Mm. And I don't know. It's just, it's just, there's no real identity to it. There's different pockets. Like if you want to go eat really good Ethiopian food, that's definitely an option, but you have to drive 40 minutes. Everything in LA feels like a 40, 40 minute minutes. Drive if you sure. want to, if you want to go to Chinatown, I told people I hit traffic at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what is this? The nightclub traffic? What is this? Yeah, pretty much. What am yeah, I, what there's am so I many eating? people living there. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a very large city, but it's just, it's large enough to f- like house that many people. I think it's like, well, probably maybe it struggles with identity million, just because least. how many people are coming to LA. People go to what LA. What I do like about it is there's a lot of different cultures there. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's very good food. There's, and I love culture in general and being educated about that. So, um, I, you know, love Persian people and, and that whole thing and, you know, Thai food and that whole thing and whatnot. That's what I feel fortunate about, about LA. Yeah. You're going to get all kinds of people from everywhere. But it's like, let's, let's, let's go ha- hang out in some central area. We don't have that here in LA. Yeah. Like, what do you guys do down here? Like, like let, let's say like everyone from different points of San Diego, let's go just this one spot. Like, what do you identify as San Diego? Downtown. <laughs> downtown. I mean, anything by the water, people generally mm-hmm. gravitate to feels like when you live in San Diego, anywhere is a 10-minute drive away. Yeah. That's so it's not that, very yeah. difficult to mm-hmm. pick a different neighborhood to go right. hang out but yeah. in, no matter where everybody's. So living. LA, like, you'll hang out in Hollywood. And then downtown's like 10 minutes without traffic. It's like 40 minutes with. Yeah. So it, it blocks people off. And it does not, people don't want to drive anywhere. It's like, come to me. And then, then we're it like, doesn't come encourage to me. people to hang out yeah. very much. So you no, end up doesn't. hanging out it's with weird. just the people in your direct proximity. You become proximity. very um, much in your own silo. Yeah. That makes sense. You're very, you become tunnel vision with the people you surround yourself with and the way you're living. And Despite you don't, yeah. No one wants to visit me because I'm in the valley, numbers. even though it's like a 15 minute drive. It's like, oh, it's the valley. It's like, yeah. Okay. And that's a mindset you know, thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I feel like, though, if people are important enough, they'll make the trip. For sure. Yeah. I got they'll friends in Orange County I see all the time. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. So. what time are we looking at? What are we looking at? Oh, you got to go, don't you? You said you're free till three. To. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to get into? As are far as talking? Be, yeah. Are you going to be podcasting? I want to get podcasting. I got a buddy who, like, What's our stopping? dynamic what is, is crazy. Just you? getting it started. Just well, yes, buying that's the, the equipment. Part. And, and I did a lot of research. Finding, carving figure. out the time. I'm about to actually write something mm-hmm. that is a, like, a quick start guide to if you want to get get a, a podcast. podcast going. Awesome. From what I learned to get myself going with things like, you know, these this kind of, this kind of like, mm-hmm. audio recorder equipment mm-hmm. and what's working for me. So I'm gonna put something like that together because it's that's really what it is. You got to get over that hump, yeah, and then order everything and just be like, "Well, it's here. I better use it." This calls how much are these guys? Um, who makes 50? these? Fifty. That's not bad. Have you heard of Yeti? That Audio microphone? Technica. Yeah, Yeti's very popular. If you search it, uh, yeah. a lot of things will send you to the Yeti microphone. Mm-hmm. These are less expensive. They sound good though. They sound. Yeah, and I've think, heard I've heard the podcast, so it's, yeah, they sound great. I think they sound pretty nice. Yeah. You just got to start going just and you'll figure it. out how it's going to yeah. work out. So Just start. Anything, do you want uh, people to know where they can find you for tennis things? 
What's your Instagram? Do My you Instagram have? is uh, ridiculously stupid, but it's <laughs> Michael the Plant, spelled M Y K A L underscore L A P. L A N T E, which is not my real name because <laughs> no one has a real name on Instagram. You don't either, so don't laugh at me. Yes, I do. Okay, that's your middle name. That's my we name. We just found that out. It's my name, though. It's my name. <laughs> Courtney Diamond. So um, my name. Uh, someone just like gave me that last name one day, and I, just, I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but that is my Instagram. Um, you will see underneath that my real last name, Michael, Mu- my real full name, Michael Muffaletto. But um, that's my Instagram. Sweet. Or you can find me on Facebook, and I'm the guy with the tennis background. If you look at my profile, there's people playing at Wimbledon. Do you do lessons for children or for adults? I do mostly children, but I do all ages. I've taught as young as four, taught all the way up to 80 something. But no, it's tons of fun. And then I just recently started selling um, vape pens to dispensaries called Platinum Vape. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a multi-billion dollar industry. That's why I'm not a huge stoner, for lack of a better word. I, I don't really don't even like using that word. I'm not a huge user, per se. <laughs> I do do edibles. Um, I actually give the samples of these to other people for them to try out and report back to me because I don't really want to jeopardize my lung capacity being that I am an athlete. But I think um, hopefully the cannabis industry is going to continue becoming more and more legal and um, somewhere to be and be more legit. And I, I see a lot of lucrative possibility there. That's it seems why I got like into it. things are going in so, that direction, yeah. don't they? Yeah. 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 Sounds good. So, yeah. Thanks for coming through. Definitely. Thanks so much for listening. Find me on the socials at Courtney Diamond and make sure to subscribe and leave a nice comment or rating if you get the chance. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're thinking about podcasting or want to know how my setup works, make sure to check out my new post up on CourtneyDiamond.com. And with that, I'm out of here. Have a great day, everyone. And I'll talk to you guys soon.